Hi, welcome back to this series of creating a hoodie for a game. In the past few episodes we created this hoodie using Marvelous Designer and you can see that pattern on the side here. Next we'll be animating it a little so it's in a different position ready for game making and then we'll be retopologizing and texturing. Okay, so I've just made a couple of changes, I just messed with the hood a little and I also noticed that these points here, they were a bit too high on the body causing the hood to actually drop back because I believe they were about up here-ish. Um, so they were relatively high up on the body and the hood was actually quite shorter than that, making it just drop really far down on the back. Now I've pushed them down, I think I pushed them down about 100 and what it's done is it's brought the hood up here onto the back of the neck uh, so it's a bit higher up and this will allow us to be able to retopologize it a heck of a lot easier so what we want is we want a lot of closeness when we're going to be retopologizing this because obviously the insides here we won't be able to retopologize so we want to keep it as closed as possible and we can also use double sided shaders so if we do get a look in here we won't just see nothing I'm just going to actually sew this up and see how that looks. Yep, so a fully zipped up hoodie allows us to not actually need to retopologize inside there at all. So, like I was saying, to make it game ready, we need to have it in a slightly different position because this position right now would mean that if we made a cage mesh, then the arm and the armpit and the start of the body here would all intersect, meaning we got some horrible artifacts. It, it just it didn't look good, and it's not something we could avoid being in that position. So to change that, if you're using your own custom avatar, you want to get a T pose, or if you're using the standard avatars using Marvelous Designer, we're going to need to change the avatar to use a T pose because unfortunately, this stuck female character it loads up doesn't have a T pose. So I'm just going to avatar in the library here which was on the side and then I'm just going to drag in female C and as you can notice it's a completely different avatar and the hoodie doesn't fit exactly how it should. So I'm just going to grab the cuff and I'm just going to move it a little bit so that the cuff is actually over the wrist and then the sleeve will join it and we'll do the same on this side, cuff over the wrist. This is just so we don't have to re-sew everything. And then whilst we get it all settled, because we're doing a completely new render, I'm just going to put the particle distance back up to 20, so it's much faster to simulate. And obviously we don't want skin sticking out the top, so we need to bring that over. And I'm just going to go around because this is a completely new avatar, I'm going to have to go around and make sure the clothing is actually over the avatar. Obviously, if you were using your own character, then you could rig up a T-pose and have it simulate the movement between. Okay, so that's about all we can do at the moment. I need to bring that collar back down a little. And now we're just going to re-simulate back to 10. And we're going to go to Pose and Female C. Now I'm going to open up this one with the arms down first. And then once it's finished, I'm just going to redo some of the wrinkles. And I've done this position because this is the closest position we're going to be having for our walking animation. So that's sort of where we want the gravity and folds to fall. Now, if you see at the bottom, we have this T-pose, so we'll just drag this onto the avatar. And because the animation and movement between it is so slow, it doesn't change much of the wrinkles. You can see a couple disappearing here and there, but if we turn off the simulation once it's finished, for the most part, the wrinkles will stay the same as it was when in that standing position. So now we have our game ready pose, and I'm just going to save this project so that we have that pose referenced. And I'm going to 
left click and drag over everything in the garment zone and click export OBJ selected and we're going to go on hoodie. Okay, and I'm going to do unwelded. We don't want to weld and I'm going to show you why. But just trust me, leave it as unwelded and thin. We're going to leave it as thin because it's not been rendered with much thickness. So if we added thickness to it, it could go wrong. And we don't want any of these textures of the diffuse we made in here. So I'm just going to leave that off. Click OK and it's exported. So open up your 3D modeling program. I use Blender. And we're going to want to import our object, which was an OBJ. So go to where you saved it, find the uh, file, and then it's in your 3D software. So in Blender, or if you exported it from Arvastan, you'll notice they're a bit big. So I'm going to scale it down to be a tenth of its size, which now allows the camera to view it all fully. The reason we didn't weld together the clothing upon export is because then when you load it into something like ZBrush it registers everything separately so when you try to subdivide it or re topologize it they become rings where the where the garment was sewed up together so we've taken it into our 3D software and as you'll notice there are duplicates of all these vertices that's where it's been sewed together so to get rid of that Go into edit mode, or whatever is in your 3D program, and then you want to remove double vertices. Now in Blender to do that, you do Control V, or Command V, I think it would be in Mac, and you'd click remove doubles, and it's removed 800 vertices. And now, there is no doubles where this has been sewed up. And what's that done, It is it will allow me to go into ZBrush, and re apologize it and mess with it without having the garment separate. So now I will re-export this from Blender as an OBJ using selection only. I saved it on my desktop so I'm going to save it over that. And now our garment is ready to re apologize So in the next video we will re apologize the hoodie. It will be starting with the sleeves and the bottom of the body from about he going up to about here. And then we'll work on handcrafting the topology for all the rest of it, including the hood. And then we'll go into baking and making textures. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, a dislike if you didn't. If your opinions are otherwise, you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or advice, leave it in the comments down below. Or you can hit me up on Twitter, which is at Sam underscore BA underscore Jones 97. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks, guys.